Hey YouTube, welcome back to the video. We are back with something very, very special this time. We are here to review some footage of Rainbow Six Siege's brand new season, Operation Shadow Legacy. Now, according to Rainbow Six Siege, this is meant to be their biggest update ever. So I'm super, super excited to share all of this gameplay footage with you guys as well. So first of all, a massive shout out to Ubisoft and to Rainbow Six Siege for allowing me early access to play all these gameplay events and check it out before everybody else and share the footage with you guys. So a massive thank you to the team at Ubisoft and Rainbow Six Siege. Massively, massively appreciate it. But we are going to reveal the trailer for Rainbow Six Siege Operation Shadow Legacy right now. You should know better than to write me off. Consider this a teaching moment. So, we are going to open up Operation Shadow Legacy together and see what it's all about. So I'm very, very excited. See, I've been away the past few days, so I've not had a chance to fully test all the gameplay out, but I'm really, really excited. Oh, my word. So as you see with the trailer, Sam Fisher, the Ubisoft Tom Clancy legend, is making a return to Rome Six Siege. So, I don't want to click anything. I just want to sit here and just admire this insane new menu screen we're gonna go for it we're gonna go for it i'm excited they can check out but there he is mr sam fisher live in action i am super 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 intrigued to see how he's gonna play say so rainbow six siege have confirmed that this is by far one of the biggest updates they've ever changed particularly meta updates for the game and i'm really intrigued to see all of the changes so we're gonna get stuck straight in and see what he's all about. So he comes under the name Zero in game. If you go to the bio section, you can scroll down and see that his actual name was Specialist Samuel Leo Zero Fisher. So he goes under the name Zero in game. So he's going to be a two speed, two armor operator by the looks of it. And the, the gadget that he comes with is known as the Argus Launcher. So a launcher that deploys cameras which can pierce through breakable and reinforced surfaces to spell either side and shoot a laser. So I'm really intrigued about how this is actually going to play out and how the gadget works actually in game. So I've not actually made any gameplay footage, gameplay footage of it just yet. But we're going to do that together. So the loadout comes with the SC-3000K assault rifle. Not seen that weapon before. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. And then the MP7 SMG. So we're going to start out with the, uh, the SC-3000K. It looks like it's going to have a new... A new site so we are oh, okay so we have the red dot we have the new holographic reticle by the looks of it the reflex stays the same but then we have the introduction of the, the 1.5 time scope and the two time scope now this could i've heard rumors about this in the past but i didn't know they were adding it straight away so i'm really excited to see how these play out because as, as you've all known for such a long time we've had the red dot the holographic and the reflex and then occasionally the, the acog scope but the three, the three sites have been like the main sites for a long time now. And it's great to see new additions of new scopes, the 1.5 times and the two times as well. So I'm really intrigued about how they will add a new element to, to the game itself as well. I just wanted to touch more on the new scopes within the game. So obviously, as we've already had before, we've had the red dot, the holographic, the reflex site. We have the new addition of the 1.5 times and the two times scope, which I've talked about previously. The ACOG scope has also had a change. So the ACOG scope is now a 2.5 times scope rather than before. So they've obviously changed the ACOG scope to allow to, for the 1.5 and the 2 times scope. So the ACOG's been changed. Also, I'm going to show you quickly for the DMRs. The DMRs have also seen a change as well. So if we quickly flick to, uh, to book for the DMR. Go across the DMR. They have a new scope. They have what's called the Marksman Rifle Scope, which is now a 3 times scope. So they've really tried to kind of level out the the balance of the scopes within the game they've also add, uh, added a uh, what's known as the excess accessibility mode so to cater for people with like color blindness so you can change the color of your reticles now as well which is really really cool and say so they've just leveled out the whole balance of the sc scope so not only do we now have the red dot site the holographic site the reflex site the 1.5 times the tube times the acog 
the 2.5 times and then now we have the three times marksman scope so i think these changes as well make a big difference to siege so not only just do you just have the basic red dot holographic reflex and acog these will add a new element to to siege itself in the way that a lot of maps are played out and i think the dmrs i personally don't use a lot of dmrs but i think adding this new marksman rifle scope marksman rifle scope on it may encourage me to try it out a little bit more but I think it's a really, really cool feature that Siege have done. I just wanted to make you guys aware that these are the changes they're making with all the scopes. The actual barrels stay in the same, the extended barrel suppressor, compensator, flash out, and muzzle break. And then the grips, they're staying the same as well. So, so it's good to see they've added a new holographic, the weapon skins as well. But if we go to the weapon in, uh, in full screen, kind of look at it a bit more, it looks similar to Legion's SMG. But it looks really, really cool. So the fact that you can put a, a, a two times scope and a 1.5 times scope is really, really cool, particularly from an attacking point of view. So it's like a mini ACOG sort of thing. It looks really, it looks like a combination of a lot, a lot of weapons. Like the barrel here looks like a bit like the Sophia's AR. Then we've kind of got like the Legion's SMG in the front here. A bit like a P90 barrel at the top at the top. And a bit like a Cali, Cali, uh, Cali kind of end to the gun here as well. So. It looks really, really cool. It's quite, it's quite a thick gun. It is thick. But it looks really, really cool. Moving down into the secondary weapon. Now, this is the all infamous silenced pistol that Sam Fisher used in many of the Tom, Clamps, Tom Clancy games. It looks really, really cool. So again, you can't, you can't take the suppressor off. It comes with the suppressor on. And you can just add the laser on it as well. But... It's one thing I really enjoyed about the Tom Clancy games in the past was just the silence pistol and the fact you could play the game very, very stealthily or you could go out a little bit all guns blazing. So that is the secondary weapon. Moving down into the gadget, we have the frag grenade, interesting, and then the claymore as well. So this could potentially overtake book with the introduction of the frag grenades. So I'm going to try out the frag grenades and see how we get on. We're going to quickly load one, load one up. We're going to, I'm going to try out this new, uh, this new two times scope and see what it's like. So, let's dive into some gameplay footage and see what it's all about. So, I just jumped into a quick custom game here on Villa. And as you can see, the scope is absolutely massive. This is currently the two times scope. So, let's say when you're picking in the, one of the hallways, the scope is actually really, really cool. So it's a little bit like Gridlock's ACOG to some extent. But it looks really, really cool. I like it. So it's slightly vertical, then off to the right. So the way you counter that is just go slightly down and then slightly to the left. So the gun's fairly easy, fairly, fairly easy to control the recoil. So I wanted to show you some of the new changes as well come into this season. So first of all, as you can see, we have the map ban phase. So from now on, players can have some control over the maps. They will ban, they'll be banning by banning the, the maps that they don't want to play for the coming match. So really, really cool. On unranked and ranked playlists before the operator ban phase, both teams ban a map by the same time through individual voting. And then after voting, a map will be selected randomly among the remaining ones to be played during the upcoming match. It's a really, really cool feature. A new element to the unranked and ranked playlist that you can now start banning maps. So obviously you can see that in like Pro League uh, events and stuff before, but now you can actually do that in the game. So not only can you ban operators, you can now ban upcoming maps. So a really, really cool feature that I think will be uh, will spice up the unranked and ranked playlist as well. And it might encourage me to play ranked. I don't know. We'll see. I can't promise you. So now I want to show you all about Zero's new gadget, known as the Argus Projectiles. Now, these are an all about Intel. As you know, with back in the day of Sam Fisher, he's an Intel operator, Intel character. That's what he's all about. So with these new gadgets that Zero has, they are used to create Intel. Now, according to Ubisoft, and I quote, this is me reading something right now. It says, Zero can fire his Argus projectiles into any breakable and reinforced surfaces, walls, floors, hatches, and ceilings to borrow through and create a camera vision on both sides of the barrier. Even if they aren't penetrable, Zero's camera projectiles will stick into most services. So I'm going to try something right now on trophy room wall and see if it'll show a camera between this wall and then into astronomy as well. So this is a live test. We're going to see how it goes.
Now that is very, very cool. First of all, the, the sound, the actual just the throwback sound of Tom Clancy. So this actually acts as like a double camera. So you can view it both sides. So you, you press five, view the, view the gadget, and you press space to switch which I think is a, is a super cool feature, particularly from an attacker operator. This is normally something you see in a defender operator, but the fact you can do this, place it either side, press brace to, to, to view different angles and hold different angles is very, 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 very cool. Now, I, I only think that Zero himself can switch the camera angles, so I don't think if, if Zero was to have died and somebody was to spectate the camera, I don't think they would be able to switch. So it's only an operator-controlled gadget. But this is very, very, very cool, and I think from an Intel point of view, from from Rainbow Six Siege, is is really I love I love this a lot. Siege is trying to go for with this new update, with with so many things that they're trying to bring something new to the game. The game is due a big update. I think everybody can agree that, but it's just very, very, very cool to see that Siege are listening and they want to make a few changes to, to bring the community, you know, bring the love back to a lot of people for the game again. So this the, the addition of Sam Fisher is straight away an absolute winner, and this cool gadget is is so cool as well. I want to try it from below as well. I just want to see if you can see it. Because it says you can do it through walls. That is so cool. So you can do it from below. So you could plant at a bomb site, hide un un under the floor below, stick one of these up, and then control the angle and quickly, so they're not going to suspect this. You could wait for them to, to try and defuse it. And take them out with either his cooked frag grenades. So this is this is really really cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's dive in to the next change for Operation Shadow Legacy. I don't think you guys are quite ready to see the chalet rework. Yes, you heard it. The chalet rework. I've not seen this yet. We're going to experience this together. But I'm really really excited to see what's been changed. Already we Five see the main door of kitchen closed. The bathroom window has been changed. Bomb must be located and diffused. We have one window has been closed up top, so now we only have one window peeking from library out onto the site. This has seen a massive, a massive, massive change. So obviously the door here has been changed as well. So now we have just the one window into... Let's just open this up and see what's been changed in here. This is going to take me a while. So the actual room layout is quite similar. Oh, okay. Okay. So we have the hatch above again, which is still the same. It's been moved slightly across before. It was like slightly more towards door side. It's moved slightly to the right. Then we have the, the old the ladder still there. Into what looks like some sort of cloak room. It's gone from a doorway into a little window. Okay, so this part here is similar similar sort of scale to what it was before, going down and lower. I'm very, very, very intrigued to see what this is going to be like. Very intrigued. This is very cool. Where does this go? So round into bar stock, to into bar. Okay, so bar is now become huge. Absolutely huge. This is really, really cool. So you can now, it's not only just like one doorway into, into the site. So if this was reinforced and you had hatch control and this is reinforced here there's only one doorway that people could come from to try and counter and get back on the sites so i like the idea that i've added another rotation into the site to have greater site control so the bar area now feels absolutely huge where does this take you so this is now okay this is this is crazy this is this is main lobby so this used to be obviously the doorway into the bar area and then we had into kit this went into kitchen i believe this is still going to go into kitchen so we'll have a look in just a second So yeah, this has gone into kitchen. This has seen a massive change as well. This is really, really cool. So the actual kitchen itself has seen a, a kind of similar sort of structure. The hatch has moved again from being about over here to the rear end of the kitchen. There's now no more kitchen window, which is massive because I used to get killed so many times from the kitchen window. But this is really, really, really cool. I love this a lot. So then down into the main entrance, into kitchen. You can now get into kitchen through that way, or... Oh, no, not longer the hallway. This map is very, very, very cool. So, and again, this follows... Oh, my word. 
this is like the most <laughs> random way of commentating the map ever, but this is crazy. So obviously you can make a rotation hole there and follow the same sort of way into kitchen. And then we have into the trophy room. Now the back stairs. We're gonna we're gonna come down those later on. We're gonna go up the main stairs and follow that way, but this is really, really, really cool. So downstairs, we're gonna go down the main main stairs. The map feels so much bigger. So much bigger and just so much better. It was definitely, definitely, definitely due a rework. So let's start with downstairs. So we have the bar area here. Into the downstairs. Where does this go? So you can have vault up. Does this now mean you can counter people trying to hard breach through garage door? Okay, so the, the garage holds a similar sort of style, structure-wise. So you can still hard breach through this. So that window adds a whole new element of just... Oh, such as, <laughs> there's going to be so many C4s thrown out of here. Particularly when people are trying to hold back angles, you can now take them out, which I think is a really, really good idea. A really good addition to the, to the map, for sure. Because once people start holding angles here, you only really are able to come out this door. And when you peep through this door, when someone's behind a snowmobile, built, you can't really see them, but you, you can be seen very, very easily. So a really cool feature that you can actually now hold from above as well. The above hatch here is now gone. As you can see, there's no hatch above the actual snowmobile garage anymore. There's still one here, though, above the storage room. Move it into the main wine cellar. Okay, so we now have a new little side room to it. Okay, so now the winery has now been completely taken out of the map. That's no longer there. With the addition of this ne this new soft wall, which I believe is going to be just the normal. Okay, so this this would have been winery winery wall, which is most likely normally reinforced. I think this adds a new a new element to the to the map. It feels a lot better. A lot, lot better. Where does this one go here, then? Oh, okay. I didn't even see that. So now no, you no longer just have to go through this door and push into sight. You can actually rotate another way into the other side as well. So I think it's a really good idea. See, just start to do this with a lot of map reworks at the minute with, with adding new rotation holes or rotation pathways into, back into sites. So you're not just having to like push through one doorway. So I think, that, you know, measured earlier on, they did it in the, the house bathroom upstairs and they've done it in both the bar area and the, the snowmobile garage as well. So a really, really, really cool addition. I think it balances the game out as well. So it's not just catered for like the pro league players. And then the back area here is, is pretty much identical to before with the two doorways that you can breach in the back room with the hatch the door right there the car's still there fridge moving away back up so then this now takes us back to where the old kitchen door would have been okay so let's go back down into the main area and try and go up the main lobby stairs so we'll experiment with a few different angles and different um, staircases as well but uh, so far i'm really really liking it really liking it let me know in the comment section of this video as well right now where you're watching it if you prefer the old chalet or the new chalet so far i know what i prefer to see what the outside looks different okay so we still have the outside balcony here the actual windows into the top bomb site has now been taken out the the, the actual balcony has gone on both ones we still have the, um, the the bedroom windows up here we have the walkway down into the garage which is still the same Obviously, the kitchen window is no longer there. The two soft windows here have now been boarded up. So we still have just the main the main doorway. And then we have going into the drone hole still there and the doorway for the window as well, jumping into the trophy room. So there's subtle changes, but enough to make you realize that there is a lot of things been happening in this map. And so far, I'm really, really, really impressed with what Ubisoft have done with this map. So let's take a look upstairs and see what's been changed up there. So this is just so cool to see so many things have been changed. So we have the, obviously the doorways now been blocked up with stone wall, but you can push into what used to be the the two, um, two soft walls that you could reinforce. We can now just push onto bar that way. So let's move up into the upstairs area. So straight away, a massive difference. This used to be the, the window from the balcony outside. That's now been kind of moved slightly across, has it? Yeah, it's been moved slightly across. You can no longer be taken out when climbing up the stairs. The staircase is a lot wider. Moving into the library, as, as I've told you from the first, uh, when we first spawned in, the left window's now been boarded up, so you can no longer do the, the cheeky spawn peaks. 
Uh, the window to the left is still there, and then the window to the right is there as well. However, the doorway that used to be here has now been boarded up and turned into a wall with a TV on it, and then the little rotation hole is still here. So, subtle changes, a few adjustments of doors and windows makes a big difference. So we have two soft walls making our way round into uh, the, the new piano room. Okay, so trying to get my bearings right now. So this used to be, this obviously this used to be the the stairs down to back into the kitchen area. We're going to start with the first bomb site here. So this has seen a big, a big adjustment, big adjustment. So this is now the office with what's going to be the rotation hole in between. Let's just try and open this one up. So this would have been the uh, the outside balcony. So you can then no longer run out and spawn peek. So another great way that CD have done to counter counter the spawn peaks because we used to get so many times of being spawn peaked on this on this map. So this no longer is a thing. So you can still you can still run out and take people out, but it takes a lot longer, and they're most likely going to get detected when they run out. So although you can still do it, the actual um, chances of spawn peeking someone right now is a, is a lot less. And obviously then we have just the just the one window right here when you are breaching up top. So what used to be the four windows has now been taken down to one. And visually, there's a massive difference from aiming in these windows where you can see the hallway and then moving up above the, the kitchen the kitchen doorway here and then across the hallway right there. It's now long, no, no longer a thing. I'm really intrigued about the whole skylight. So, moving into the office area. There's a couple of ways that you can now still um, hold sites. I think this area will be a, quite a key area to, um, to plant and then protect the bomb. Because you can cover angles from the rotation hole and in the doorway. So if these walls have already been reinforced from the enemy, which the most likely will have been, then you, you stand a good chance of, of kind of holding an angle and protecting the bomb as well. So moving back into the piano room, we're going to come over to this area in just a second. We're going to push through into uh, the master bedroom. So the, door, the, the window frame is still there. So what used to be the, the window and then the outside uh, door here and then onto the balcony has now been extended into a whole new room called the Solarium. This is really, really cool. I love this a lot. So it just makes the map feel a whole lot bigger. It was the exact same thing with House before. The map just feels huge and so many new angles to hold, so many new ways to rotate into bomb sites and a really, really nice feature. So then this will then have... Although there's no outside balcony, you can still count people who are trying to peek on the rocks from, from spawn. However, they will most likely be pre-firing through these windows. So if you do try and spawn peek, you may be taken out through pre-fire. Um, we have another way you can hold back as well. So a cool cool new addition to a few different angles you can hold when planting bomb sites. If you planted the bomb around here, around behind, behind the actual bed, you could hold angles through the, the, um, the master bedroom rotation hole. And then also the doorway from the what looks like the bathroom. So there are the new staircase that's said we'd go down. We're going to go down in just a minute. But if we move through into the bathroom area. So, the master bathroom has now seen a new addition. So yes, it still has this little spawn peak little window, which has now been turned into a single window from a double. You can still hold um, angle from being in the bathroom. But rather than just being a solid wall, and then you have the rotation hole here, and then back through the, the bathroom door you can rotate back into the main hallway and into the piano room. So, as I said all along with so far this video, is that Siege have added a lot, lot of new rotation holes back into different angles, so you're not just having to go through one door when either attacking or defending a bomb site as well. So a really, really cool feature that I am massively impressed with Chalet so far. I think it was a map that was definitely, definitely needing a rework, and I think they've done a fantastic job with all the rooms. It feels like a, it feels like a whole new map. I really, really like it. So there are a couple of other changes that I want to show you guys before we jump off this map. And this is the change to the garage area. So yes, you can still breach through the garage door. It's now become a lot smaller. It's only been a big double. It's kind of like a large single. So you can still breach through this way and enter through there. However, as you can see, the windows at the top where the C4s used to come out of are no longer there. They've been boarded up. But we have the brand new window right above where enemies can vault out of and very, very easily throughout C4s. So you're going to be... Uh, much more pressure or much more under pressure should i say when kind of breaching through this site so not only can you just like before just take your time throw a couple of thatch uh, EMP, emp grenades at, uh, under the the drone hole under the door frame and then breach in because the chances of somebody landing a c4 out this window was quite slim however now they have the window they can not only shoot you first of all but a lot more success with c4s however we have the new ladder right here so you can actually breach in through this door, uh, this window, sorry. 
and then you're now into the main lobby area. So you're now inside a lot quicker and from above as well. But that's not the only thing I want to show you guys as well. If you look up, yes, it does say hold space to repel. Yes, we are repelling up to the roof. So as you can see, you can now get on the roof of Chalet. So this is a great way to rotate to the other side of the map without having to go through the map first of all or under the map and quickly regroup with your teammates. So if somebody else is about to plant on B, for example, right now, and you've been taking out a couple of people by a garage and you want to rotate around and support them, you can very, very quickly rappel up to the roof, run across over the roof, no bother at all. So you can't actually enter the site from the roof. However, you can breach in through the windows here or the windows just further down as well. So there's multiple ways that you can actually rotate back into site very quickly. For example, you could rappel down, quickly breach into the new solarium room and they'll be ready to support your teammates while they're planting in the uh, master bedroom. So another really cool way that you can actually get round onto site because the map feels so much bigger right now, there's a really cool way to kind of just regroup with your teammates or kind of a fun way to rotate and catch enemies off guard. So overall, I'm very, very, very impressed with a change to, sh to Chalet. Ubisoft have done a fantastic job. I'm very, very excited to keep playing this map a little bit further. So last couple of changes, let's go. So, we have the new addition of the Hard Breach Charge. Yes, Hard Breach Charge. As you can see down below by the G button, we have the brand new Hard Breach Charge. Now, according to Ubisoft, I'm reading something off my notes right now, and it says, much like the Breach Charge, this gadget is meant to be deployed on a wall, hatch, or barricade and blast through it. However, the Hard Breach Charge also works on reinforced surfaces and leaves a medium-sized hole that operators can navigate. Take care to not stay too close because the, the charge is automatically activated shortly after deployment is done. So compared to normal breach charges where you'd plant it, you step back a bit and then you'd press the button to activate the breach charge, this hard breach charge does it on its own. So we're going to take a look. This is the first time I've tried it. So as I say, this can be used on reinforced walls, hence the name hard breach charge. So another, a new, another new element to siege with a whole new changes with the hard breaches as well. So let's give it a go. So it looks like it has like five stages of pings. Takes them out. And then it's a great way for you to push into side. So it works on reinforced walls. It obviously works on soft walls as well. But a really, really cool way to, to breach into different sites, hold different angles, open up new angles as well from the back area of winery and obviously according to, to blue stairs as well. So a really cool feature with the hard breaches, I really like it a lot. So not only do you have to always rely on people like Thermite or Hibana or Ace, if you do forget to bring one of them, you're like, oh, I've not got a hard breach, we can't push it to site. Having someone like Ying, which most teams bring a Ying nowadays with just the Candelas that are so OP. It's a brand new element to the game and I really, really like it as well. So the last couple of changes I want to tell you guys about. The first one is the new reinforcement pool system. Now, as you know, with all defending operators, they all come with two, op two reinforcements to reinforce walls. However, that's now changing. You don't have that option anymore. What happens is when you spawn in, you have a reinforcement pool system of a choice of up to 10 reinforcements to share with your teammates. So what could happen is for a, for a new player who doesn't really know how to reinforce, they could just run off and try and put some down some traps and some of the build a bit more experience could take up more of the reinforcements and reinforce walls that are meant to be reinforced. Now, the very last update on this video, I promise, we've covered a lot in this video and this video is a very long video, so I do apologize, but it is Thatcher's EMP grenade. Now, as you know, when playing Thatcher, sometimes when throwing the EMP grenade, some, for example, reinforced walls, it will completely disable any traps, so K traps or bandit tricks, completely disable them. Things like Malusi's gadget, it will temporarily disable them, and then you can push in. And then later on, a few seconds later, Malusi's gadget will come back again. So now what they're doing with the changes, they are balancing it all out and making it temporarily disable all enemy equipment. So for example, if you were to throw an EMP grenade on a reinforced um, bandit's wall, all that will happen, it won't, it won't, it won't destroy it. All that happened, it will sort of temporarily disable it. So you could just run in, Thatcher the wall or Habana or ace it, and then then push your way in. However, if you were to EMP the, the wall, and then it took a while for Thermite to rotate around and come to the wall, the wall will be, uh, will be electrocuted once again. So it doesn't completely take it out anymore. It's going to have the same effect across the board to try and level the level the playing board out, and it's just going to temporarily disable all enemy traps and, and reinforce walls and things like that. So. EMP grenades now have one effect across all enemy devices. 
But guys, I do apologize that this video has been quite a long one. I've just been so excited to get back from holiday and get all this footage together and share with you guys what's to come with Operation Shadow Legacy. So not only do we have Sam Fisher, I feel like we've just forgotten about Sam Fisher because we've been going into detail about so many other things. We have the shadow rework, the map bans, the, the, the uh, EMP Thatcher changes. We have the accessibility changes, the new scopes. We have the map bans, the match replay system, the reinforcement changes, the hard breach changes. There's so many things to come as well, and there's, there's even more to come as well. I'm so excited for you to see it. Guys, if you have liked the video, please leave a like on the video. It would mean the absolute world. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, because right now, as we're recording this video, we are on the way to 4,000 subscribers, so a huge thank you. A massive shout out again to Ubisoft and Rainbow Six Siege for letting me play this game early and have early access to the gameplay and loads of other features as well. So a huge thank you to you guys. You guys are amazing. But guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to watch this video. I really hope you're excited as I am for Operation Shadow Legacy. See you guys in the new season.